Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and you join me today on new watch collection day. So we're taking the 458 down to pick up a new watch from my AD. Just driving back from my authorised dealer now, and that's the new timepiece. Don't know if you can see it okay, it's dark, so we've got the inside lights on on the Ferrari just to see if you can see the watch. And for the eagle eyed of you, you'll notice it's the Rolex Deep Sea James Cameron edition with the gradiated dial, very sought after. A nice, uh, a, a real lovely addition to the to the collection. A real, it builds out the collection to be a real, really eclectic, with all the different GMTs, um, stopwatches, and now divers watch. So yeah, pretty cool. So we're back now. We've collected the James Cameron Sea Dweller Deep Sea, and I'm just going to go through with you um, some facts about the Sea Dweller, about the Deep Sea version, and in, in particular the James Cameron version. Um, but first of all, what am I wearing today? I'm wearing the 116503 two-tone Daytona with the black Mother of Pearl dial, which is also called the Tahitian Mother of, Mother of Pearl dial. And this is uh, now discontinued, so quite rare. So I'm very fortunate that I ordered the correct watch with the right, um, with the right dial, beautiful dial. So if you want to check out the 116503, I did a review of the 116503 in, um, in my watches playlist. So check it below and you'll, you'll be able to watch that video. So the James Cameron, this is a, an interesting watch. Now, the Deep Sea version was an addition to the Sea Dweller range and the Deep Sea was introduced in 2008. Um, the, uh, the Deep Sea has what's called the proprietary ring lock system. And what the ring lock system in effect is, it's the design that Rolex implement to be and to enable the watch to go down to incredible depths, um, which is 3,900 meters. So why the James Cameron version of this watch? So this watch was made famous by James Cameron navigating down in a submersible to the, to the Mariana Trench, to the lowest depths of the Mariana Trench, which is 11,000 meters. Now he had a bespoke version of the, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Sea Dweller Deep Sea. Um, and the version, the special version that he had was actually strapped to the submersible arm on the outside of the submersible. And he actually had a James Cameron, he had, and he actually had a deep sea that he was wearing on his wrist. Now to commemorate that event, the 20, in 2014, the James Cameron dial was introduced. And the James Cameron dial is a blue dial transversing or transgressing down to black to show the actual depths, to, sh to show the colors uh, that are reached. So when you're towards the surface of the of the ocean, obviously the, you can see the sun coming through and so it looks blue. And then as you go down to the depths of the Mariana Trench, it turns into pitch black. So as you can see here, this is the James Cameron deep sea. You've got the helium escape valve on the side of the watch. Um, the helium scape valve is, is very well designed into the actual watch. I'll try and show it here. So as opposed to the Seamaster, the Seamaster has quite a bulbous helium escape valve. And it's, you know, you either love it or you hate it. And it actually deters a lot of people from buying that particular watch. But here, as you can see, the actual escape valve is, is, is flush with the actual case, which is pretty cool. I've only just picked this up, as you know. So this is the 12660. Um, model number. So this is the latest edition of the James Cameron Deep Sea. The initial version of the James Cameron that was released in 2014 um, actually was was uh, numbered 11660. Now the changes that they made between the 11660 and the 12660 is the movement. So it was enhanced up to the 3235 movement, which made a change from um, 48 hours power reserve up to 70 hours power reserve. So quite a substantial movement forwards. And also, because the watch was perceived to not quite fit so well on the wrist, they actually enhanced um, the strap and the actual front section where the strap adheres to the actual case and the lugs. So the lugs were redesigned to fit the new strap as well. Um, and the bracelet end links, which is the actual section here that interfaces in with the actual case, these end links were converted from 20 millimeters to 21 millimeters so that the strap could be wider to better support the weight of the watch. And it actually fits flatter and the lugs curve around better to the actual wrist. 
I will put it on in a second, but as you can see, um, it's not actually wound up at the moment because it's been in my collection. Um, I've, I've worn it quite a lot. It's actually initially when I, when I, um, when we, when we collected it, I couldn't take it off my wrist. It was uh, such a beautiful watch. Um, but I do change around. I have quite a few watches in my collection. I change it around in a collection. So, um, it will get rested every now and again. All my watches get rested and as, a, as I take another one out and as and when I feel like changing, changing my watches. As you can see, the dial's really cool. And the, um, the actual submersible, which was called the Deep Sea Challenger that James Cameron implemented to go down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench was colored green. And if you can see there, the actual, again, to um, commemorate the, the event, the actual lettering Deep Sea is actually in green to commemorate the color of the submersible. A lot of people worry about this watch in that it's actually very thick um, and it is quite top heavy. I mean, you can't get away from it. It's quite a big watch. It's the biggest watch that Rolex, um, that Rolex um, sell. My, my wrists are, uh, I believe, seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches. Um, so I've not got small wrists. So I've got, not got massive wrists, but I've not got small wrists. So it supports this watch very well. But people worry about it, but actually fits the wrist very, very well. I will actually put it on now. I'll take my Daytona off and put this on so you can see. I'll give it a clean because I'm paranoid about when I put the watches back in my safe. Uh, when I put the watches back in the safe, I'm paranoid about them being clean. Um, I'll also talk you through some bits and pieces about this watch as well. So with regards to the actual clasp, you have the grid lock system. Now what that enables you to do, this is bespoke to the actual deep sea. You can you pull out part of the actual bracelet and it enables you to actually slide. So you pull out part of the clasp and it enables you to actually slide the bracelet in and out. Now that separation there is 20 millimeters. So that actually gives you 20 millimeters of extension. Now I actually have it sized so it should be fully in for my wrist. You also have a flip lock mechanism. I've got to try and see if I can get it to get it to function. I think you actually have to have the you have to have the grid lock system fully out like so. Then you can get the flip lock mechanism to for it to work. Oh, there you go. So there, um, so you've got the flip lock mechanism. Now, obviously this gives you, and this provides an additional 26 millimeters. So you've got 46 millimeters of extension from what would normally be sized for your wrist. Now, obviously that's not normal. Your wrist isn't gonna expand that amount throughout a day. So it's to encompass wearing a diving suit. So you can actually put this over your diving suit. Um, it gives you the full flexibility to to change the dimensions of the of the bracelet to be able to fit it over your diving suit so that you can actually wear it over your diving suit go diving and then when you come back just readjust it back again close the flip lock close the glide lock and bang put it back on your wrist you see there it actually fits the wrist very well I have to part dislocate my wrist to get the wrist round properly so you can see it. Obviously it's upside down there as well. And yeah, yeah, I mean you can't get away from it. It's quite a thick watch. I don't know if you can see that in the in the image. But it actually balances very well. Of course the bezel, of course the be bezel is cerachrome, which is um, a very, very tough material. Um, so it's ceramic. And they call it cerachrome, so it's ceramic. And you've got the actual platinum letters embedded in the actual ceramic bezel as well. And this, um, the actual bezel is anti-clockwise movement. So obviously uh, you can't move it clockwise and that's because it's a proper diver's watch and it's used to adjust or, it's, or the bezel is used to actually time uh, when you're likely to, um, when your gas um, oxygen tanks are likely to deplete and you would set it to a particular point um, so that the actual time would hit that point and you'd know that you're, you're going to be running out of oxygen. Obviously, you don't want it to be able to reduce that time accidentally because you could run out of oxygen, which wouldn't be a great thing. Um, I suspect very, very few people will ever use it for that capability. I'm just showing you there the actual audibility of the actual bezel as you, as you move it around. A lot of people um, get really hooked into the clicks of these bezels. It does sound cool and it's very well engineered, of course, being a Rolex, but... Yeah, it's just the clicking of a bezel at the end of the day. So the, the new edition, which is which this is, as, as I've detailed before, the 12660, 
Uh, the new edition 12660 was introduced at Baselworld in 2018. So the James Cameron dial was introduced in, um, so the James Cameron dial version of the Deep Sea was introduced in 2014. And then four years later, the 12660, um, the new edition of the James Cameron was released um, at Baselworld. There's been talk for many years that this watch is going to be discontinued. And you know what happens when Rolexes are discontinued? They go way up in value. Um, notwithstanding that, you know, obviously most Rolexes, because you can't get hold of them, they actually are, um, they always are listed at overs anyway, straight away. As soon as you walk out of, of a Rolex authorised dealer, then pretty much the Rolex you, you're wearing will be a, at minimum about a third more in value. Um, because that's that's just how Rolex prices are on the, on the grey market at the moment. Um, commonly, you know, watches will be going for twice as much for things like the Pepsi, the Batman, um, which are the GMT2 range. Um, and, you know, Daytonas, you know, Daytonas go for crazy, crazy prices on the grey market. That's the steel Daytonas. Um, and, you know, my, my Daytona as well has gone up in value due to it being discontinued and the, and the dial being very, very rare. It's a really cool watch. I really love this watch. And, you know, this is a watch that's never going to leave my collection. I mean, I, you know, I've no intention of selling selling my watches at all. Um, only only when absolutely necessary or if, or if I've got another watch coming in that is of, of the same design, but maybe a precious material or something, then maybe I'll sell an inferior version. When I say inferior, I mean inferior from the point of view of it being still as opposed to a precious metal. Um, so that's the only time I would ever sell one of my watches. I'm, I'm, I don't flip watches. That's not what I'm about. I, they're a real thing of beauty, um, these watches. The actual engineering is phenomenal. And because I'm an engineer, I'm a scientific engineer, if you like, um, it just it's just the coolness of the engineering that goes into these watches, the design, um, the actual build quality of these watches is just absolutely phenomenal. We were talking there about the bezel and, you know, just just the bezel design of the and engineering of the bezel is just super cool. You know, um, you can tell the difference between the inferior brands. When we collected the um, the James Cameron, it was a very cool event. Um, we went in the 458, as, as you've seen, we went down in the 458 to collect it. Um, my authorised dealer, um, I've, I've known them for about 12, 14, 15 years now. Um, so I have a very, very good relationship with them. They always look after me. So uh, thanks very much. You know who you are. I'm not going to mention you on camera because otherwise we'll have you and your droves knocking on their door trying to get Rolexes, probably saying I sent you. Um, they get horrendous amount of footfall. Um, people coming in trying to pick up Rolexes on the fly. I mean, you just can't get them, you know. Um, I mean, I was, I'm fortunate to get the watches that I can get because they're so rare, these watches. But I have to wait, you know, I'm, I, and I've got, I've built this relationship with this authorised dealer um, 15 years ago and I have to wait, you know. So I don't, I don't get them and like turn it up on my doorstep I, and I don't spend an absolute fortune with the, uh, with the dealer, but they're very good. And, and uh, you know, I've known them, as I say, for a long time. When we went to pick up the watch, um, I was a bit worried where to park the car, um, and uh, you know the owner of the owner of the of the jewelers was really cool. He said, "Oh, don't worry about that." He said, "Just park it right outside the store." So in the in the main high street where this where this authorized dealer is located, and we parked the, managed to park the car right on the pavement, right outside the store. Uh, it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, we didn't take any pictures. We were so caught up in the moment um, and enjoying the moment, we didn't take any pictures. And I thought afterwards that was a big mistake. Should have got some pictures, but it is what it is. And he, he's off, they've obviously got security at um, at their jewellers. He closed down the shop for me. Um, it was the end of the day anyway. Um, and uh, he got his security to come out and to stand there pretty much like this <laughs> in front of my Ferrari. Um, and uh, people were walking by saying, oh, a really cool car, you know, to uh, to the actual um, security guard, which is pretty cool. And then we went in and we did the transaction. Uh, I bought my uh, authorised dealer a, a lovely bottle of whiskey um, because, uh, and, and that's the first gift I've ever given him. But he's, he looks after me so well. You know, if I wanted to, I, you know, I could turn this around, um, you know, and, and pick up five, six grand on top of what I paid for this. Um, pure profit straight away after I'd bought it. I'm not going to do that because I love the watches, but it's possible to do that. So, you know, in a in a weird way, you could argue that he's given me perceivably five five to six grand by allowing me to have these watches. I know it's not strictly like that, um, but notwithstanding, that's what you can turn around on 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 this particular watch, and obviously on on other Rolex watches is the 
the premium on um, from purchase from the authorised dealer t- uh, to the grey market is is quite substantial and, and more than this. So um, we collected the watch, and then we came back into the car, and then we we parked a bit further up in um, from the high street where we were, um, because you know Jacob and I we always celebrate the collection of a of a nice timepiece um, when we go and pick one up, and we went to this place and uh, and and uh, had a meal and uh, had some drinks and Jacob went back to the car we were parked right outside um, opposite the actual restaurant where we were and it's, it's, it's quite a well-known restaurant uh, where we went to collect the watch Jacob went back to the car to uh, put his jumper in the car because it's quite hot and uh, a guy turned up in a testrosa and parked right behind us he's actually in a 512 TR um, and uh, he parked right behind our Ferrari and our Ferraris were the, were the only ones parked in that area and I could see Jacob chatting to this guy and I thought you know who's he talking to then you know that only turns out it's flipping Chris Harris <laughs> so we we pick up the pick up the the watch in the in in the in the um, four five eight. Then we drive up, we go and have a meal, and then Chris Harris parks right behind our car, and we have a conversation with him. A uh, really cool guy. He's a really nice guy. So you know that just was the topping on the event. So picking up a Rolex, an event in itself, um, having a nice meal, going in the Ferrari, and then you know having a chat with Chris Harris. I mean, what is the chances of that as Chris Harris turning that behind us in his in his Testarossa five one two? You know, incredible. Um, we'll we'll chuck some. We did we did take some still pictures of that of his five one two. So we'll put some pictures here of it, um, just so you you believe me, <laughs> it did happen. Um, but um, but yeah, so it was the whole event was very very cool. Um, obviously, picking up a Rolex as I say, very cool event in itself. Going in the four five eight, having the security coming out and look over the car, um, the the shop being closed, so we're the only ones in the shop when we're collecting the watch, which is again very cool. Going up and having a lovely meal to celebrate the actual occurrence of of collecting the watch, and then Chris Harris sort of, sort of turning up there, massive fluke, and 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 having a chat with Chris and seeing his five one two TR, beautiful car. So it just really rounded off the day. The whole day was just a, a, a fantastic event. Um, and we're, you know, really glad that I can relay this across to you, and in some way bring you, uh, bring you, uh, you know, and, and in some way include you in the event. I know you obviously you weren't there, but um, it's 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 pretty cool thing to actually explain and to um, and to go back over. So I hope you enjoyed this little inclusion with you to the actual collection of the watch and to the event in itself, meeting Chris Harris, etc. If you like the video and if you if you like the the if you like the event and me bringing you along, then please. Um, click the like button and give the give the video a thumbs up some great future content to come keep watching there's a watch playlist as i did before obviously there's a lot of content on supercars as well and different playlists below if you're not subscribed then please think about subscribing thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video